Hi there, I'm playing with Chunk again, and this time I have another gas analyzer. It's called the Gas Module SE from Datascope. And uh, this time it's a very compact unit. It's relatively small, like a super small PC. And it has an attachment here where a monitor unit comes on top of that. Uh, I don't have that monitor unit, but I promise you there are a, a couple of interesting things inside and a couple of very expensive th things inside and, uh, well, stay tuned. From the first glance it doesn't look very spectacular. There is a power supply that looks pretty normal. We have a logic board with some a lot of SMD uh, resistors and capacitors. I'm sure the interesting chip are on the other side. And then we have a weird metal container here that is mounted on springs and we will see what that is. Okay, let's take it apart. Well, I don't think you want to see the power supply, so because you have seen a lot of power supplies, probably. So let's have a look at the heart of the entire thing. Not much to see yet, but that will be better in a moment. And we can already see one of the expensive parts here. And believe it or not, it's that hose here. And there is another one going to that device over there, coming from, can't see it. Um, What's so special with this tube? So it's uh, the material is called Nafion, N-A-F-E-O-N, I-O-N, and uh, it's a special material. It's similar to uh, Teflon, but it has the the property to um, to let air or moisture, uh, not air, water or moisture through. So you can use it to dry gases. Um, it does it in a quite a specific way. Uh, if you want, there is a Wikipedia article about that, Nafion. And um, it's quite expensive. I saw it uh, from a dealer, three meters for $360. So more or less it's one dollar per centimeter. That's about that much. So let's measure that according to the price list. That piece of hose is worth $30. 
And there is another one. We are already on $60 with two pieces of plastic hose. Well, plastic is probably not the right term for that, but well, it's what most people would call it. So, how can we get here? There are a lot of connectors to this board. It's not very service friendly. But, okay. So, that's the main control board. We have an Intel 80C uh, 196NT. Probably a microcontroller with some uh, EPROM, some uh, RAM probably. Yes, I think that's a RAM, probably a static RAM. So that's the main CPU corner here. There is a bit of analog amplifier stuff. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight. That's an important number because that analyzer here is able to measure eight different gases. So let's see if we find the sensors. There is a strange cable coming out from the back here. Then we have some other tubes. Go there. More connectors. So where is the big one? There's a large connector that was not connected to anything. But it still keeps keeps that board in place. There's another screw. It, it's one of those directly crimp to board solder connector. Uh, that's it cannot be unplugged. So now what do we have here? We have two pressure sensors, one with one port and one with two ports. Uh, the reason is simple, that measures an absolute pressure and that measures a relative pressure between the two ports here. And then we have some amplifiers, a little bit of analog stuff, valves, they are connected here. Okay, so from the electronics side, not by the way, that's a very dusty uh, fan, cooling fan for cooling that heatsink here. That's one of the interesting parts. And where is all the rest? Where is the physics package? Because the electronics package is not so exciting. There are more screws. It's uh, an interesting design. They have screws all around. Everything is screwed together with everything. Okay, now we can get that out. Now there are hoses attached. So we have that strange part here with four that's just cheap I don't know what plastic it feels a bit like silicone but I think it's something else uh, <laughs> so that comes off like this that no we can't so I have to unhook this 
those springs here. So it's mounted on springs, vibration uh, damped. How is that attached to the rest? There are no screws. Strange. Okay, so we have that thing. We will take a closer look right after that. Okay, where do we go? There is another hose going around here. I'm glad that I don't have to reassemble that. Okay, that's just the cable, so that's just sheet metal. Not interesting anymore. Okay, there we have something. What's that? Okay, that's two uh, electric valves switching something. Don't know what exactly, but they are nice miniature electromagnetic valves operated 12 volt DC. Each one has two wires, very easy. Current makes them switch, no current makes them switch back. Well, why not take a smaller screwdriver and have a look how they work? Maybe we can see something. Let's remove one of them. So the ports are here. You see that? We have three holes. So I think that works like an electric switch. One is the common and then it switches to that or that hole. I don't know what exactly. There is a gasket. Yeah. Going like that. And the other one is certainly exactly the same. I'm a bit disappointed not to see round ports because that would make it a little bit easier to interface. But on the other side, I have the gasket that fits. So all I have to do is to build a block with three holes and attach some hose nipples. Okay, what's inside? Where is my screwdriver? I don't have one. So I take my knife. Yep, seems to work. Okay, now that's open. So you see again the three holes that go to the valve. I can't say which one is input and which two are output. There is one valve, there is the other one connecting that cavity to this hole or maybe this tube. Okay, so I don't really know what exactly it does, but it's some pneumatic switch. Okay, then we have more parts. We have more parts. For example, this one. And that looks like a small uh, compressor air compressor. It is attached with this tie wrap here that surprises me a little bit because everything is screwed with at least three or more screws and they attach the compressor with a tie wrap but 
maybe that's for a good reason we don't know so we have two hoses one is input the other one is output which one is which can't say no marking no arrow no nothing s cap electric motor made in switzerland and i hope you know that all good electric motors come from switzerland as all good electronics comes from japan as you know um, the pump itself it's from what's that asf thomas don't know that made in germany so an international product because all the rest is if i'm not wrong it's made in the usa and that's a quite interesting motor it has two four six wires and if we look in the data sheet we find it's a brushless dc motor but it has the electronics inside so uh, that means one pin is ground one pin is power supply then we have one wire for direction control set it high it turns clockwise set it low it turns counterclockwise or maybe otherwise uh, you will find the data sheet when you're looking for the part number easy to find um, yeah let's have a look inside just want to see how the mechanical parts are working here so we need a torx screwdriver one size bigger yes that's the right one so i think if we open that cover we should see the mechanical parts i have to reach my special tool again some people already call me macgyver because i'm always working with my with my pocket knife here okay we see something like a crankshaft and a push rod yes i think i hope you can see that too that the outer ring here is going up and down eccentrically and that pushes on the piston down here let me adjust the light yeah it's a bit tricky where are you you are here i have to look through the camera yeah can you see it piston goes up and down and if you wanted a large screw here why that is so large well it acts to it is to, of course to hold this uh, x center unit here on the shaft and it's also counterweight to compensate for the, the rotation here that's very clever one screw has two functions i like that okay let's close that again so that's definitely one of the parts i will keep because you you never know when you need a small air pump or a small va vacuum pump for whatever okay then we have that mystery device and of course the big mystery device here which is still attached with three screws but not for long
Okay. And there is the other expensive hose. That's another 30 bucks. It's the same length. Yeah, same length. Um, I also found this types of hoses on uh, in forums about fuel cells and it seems they have some properties that can be used to make fuel cells. Uh, I have no idea how that works. I have to read that later but yeah, uh, what was the name? Nefton? Uh, wait. Okay, it's Nephian tubes. Sometimes I have problems remembering names, especially if I never heard them before. Um, there's another thing. It's a container that falls to the ground if you let it go. And it has something inside. It's just a triangular container with an input and an output. What's inside? Okay, let's see if we can crack that. So that side looks like it's glued on or welded on. Oh, yeah, it's expired. So no problems. We can destroy it. Maybe that's the reason why the whole unit was tossed away because the expiry date is over. So that was the cover. There is some felt inside, something like a sponge and some crispy material here. And from the schematic diagram, I know it's a carbon dioxide filter, so it removes carbon dioxide. It's some of some ceramic, no, not ceramic, it's some, well, what is it? Let me see. Okay, I just googled CO2 absorber. It's some natrium hydroxide, uh, right? Yes. Or some sort of limestone. Yeah, that's about what it is. And that absorbs carbon dioxide. So let's see what that is. That looks really spacey. Like some satellite technology directly imported from NASA. Okay, there's some insulation around it. Then we have two larger two flat wires. They were connected in these dip sockets on the board. Then we have a two wire. Wow, dusty. Then we have two wires that go in here. And we have a heat sink with a lot of dust and we have an input and the output. One of them has a black dot so maybe if we look it at the manual, we can see which one is which. Then we have some aluminium tape that holds down the flat cable. And no way, they really, they, they machined here a slot for the cable so that the cable can, out, can come out straight. So that's quite an effort to do that. Okay, let's open that cover here. 
what's underneath mm. PCB with some cans that look like transistors and another one that looks like a small transistor in a in a plastic case that goes into the, the hole here and we have three pins three pins three pins one two three four five six seven of those well i would say some sort of sensor and we have that one and because I already disassembled another unit, I leave this one intact because we never know. Maybe one day we can use that. And let's have a look at the other one. Well, that's the disassembled part. So here was the heatsink. It had its own gasket here with some insulation material. And there is a little window made of a pink type of glass, so maybe that's just a seal. And we see inside there is a little coil, a little wire wound, wound up. And if we take that one out, we will see it's just a coil of wire with a black coat around it so that's a heating element or it's a infrared emitter because if we heat that up if we put some current through that this one will go hot it won't glow because we don't need the visible part of the infrared or, or red well we, we cannot see infrared of course but we don't need red light we need infrared so it won't glow, we, you won't see it, but it emits long wave infrared. That long wave infrared goes in here and comes out on this side. And here, that's the chamber where the heating element or this infrared emitter is. Here on this side is the gas input is that true yeah it's somewhere between that so where is the gas input okay it seems i lost that part from the other device so the gas input is between the infrared source and the, the beam chamber here so that means infrared light or not visible infrared light is passing through that gas filled chamber then it passes through this arrangement of holes here while it seems one hole is plated somehow or is there an insert of glass i think there is something inside yes you, you can see the reflection so one hole has glass inside, the others just look empty. And then we go to that side where our seven sensors are mounted. With one extra hole here for this temperature sensor, which is an LM35, a common temperature sensor. Not a super precision thing, but good enough for this. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that on camera, but you can see the chips down behind the glass window here. And it seems they are all a little bit different. So we are sensing different wavelengths of this broad spectrum uh, emitter here. And 
the gases we want to measure. So there is a mix of gas. It's some anesthetic gases. Uh, it's carbon dioxide and no, uh, they remove that. But it's oxygen and all kind of anesthetic uh, gases. And depending on which wavelength you're measuring, you can measure the absorption of that specific gas. So, for example, even CO2 has uh, absorbs uh, infrared in a certain spectrum. So, if you measure that spectrum, you could say how much carbon dioxide is here, but we don't measure that. So, there are all kinds of uh, anesthetic gas gases. So, I, I think I will. Uh, insert a, a small list uh, what this sensor actually can sense and that's how it looks like. So at the end that's a, a, a thermopile. Uh, it's like a, a infrared camera but only with one, with one pixel. So we have seven infrared cameras with our thermal cameras to be more precise with different wavelengths so that's depending on which sensor you use here and they react to different gases that come in around here yeah very interesting thing and of course i also have two of those units so i leave that intact and I have already opened that one, so there is not much to see on this side. Some hoses coming in, do some loops going in here and here and here and here into the case. But the other side, and I must admit I had no idea how that works until I found the service manual of this unit here. And that's an oxygen sensor. And the way how it works is uh, really clever. So you see a big coil here that is connected to that connector here with diode. So I'm pretty sure that's a, a, thermal, uh, a thermal sensor. This diode, they use it as a, as a thermometer. Then we have gas lines for the oxygen mixture and we have some electronic parts here and how it works so I can only roughly tell you because I, I didn't understand it completely but um, the air mixture or the oxygen gas mixture comes in here and a very strong magnetic field is applied with a frequency of 160 Hertz and it seems that oxygen has some paramagnetic properties so the oxygen uh, molecules here in this gas mixer uh, they react to this strong magnetic field by the way we have here marking 3.4 Tesla. I don't know if that's the strength of the magnetic field per whatever, because maybe that's just an autograph from the guy who measured that. So uh, the gas, the, the oxygen, starts to vibrate in the same speed as the magnetic field here changes. And the vibration of that gas will be picked up by this kind, it's some kind of microphone. So gas vibrations, that's the same as sound. Sound is nothing, nothing different than vibrations of gas, of, of air. So here the oxygen molecules start to vibrate at 160 Hertz. And the more oxygen is in the mixture, the stronger the vibrations are. Uh, so the sound that is picked up, oh sound, yes, 
some kind of sound that is picked up, picked up by these microphones gets stronger it will be rectified so you at the end you get a dc voltage that uh, is proportional to the amount of oxygen in the mixture yeah let's take that apart so i'm really i really don't know what to expect here uh, I'm not even sure if that is a torque screw. Hmm, maybe yes. Yeah, seems so. Hopefully we can yes open that. So that's really a scientific bit of equipment here. So do we have other screws? No, there's a lot of hot glue. I think we have to break that. There are some line, uh, some hoses here. That's the electrical connections. Then they spun the hoses around this. Ah, okay. The entire electronic block comes out. So what are you they do with these hoses? Super small plastic hose. I don't know where I could use that, but certainly difficult to get if you need one. So they spun it around a couple of times and then they glued it in place here and here. Oh, okay, so they connected it to the holes here. Those holes connect to the ports here and that's some kind of differential pressure sensor for high speed changes. So, or in other words, it's some kind of a differential pressure microphone. Can we open that? It has a clamp here. Yes, it moves. Okay. So what's that? It's all well glued together. Hmm. Okay, something popped off. Uh, it's filled, filled with some schmoo, and there's some, there are some electronic components inside, and that's one of the few times I have absolutely no idea what's happening so that looks like a membrane here that part and the other part ah it could be a some kind of a condenser microphone so the membrane which seems to be a metal foil and the electrode here they form a capacitor which changes when the two Elements come together or go apart by the sound waves. Okay, so that's some kind of microphone. And then we have that part which is well glued inside. So no, I'm not using the right tool here, but probably Well, I think that's pretty clear. You can also see the, the core of, of this coil here. So I think they pump gas in here and it comes out here and it gets excited by this magnetic field. So that's more or less, that's it. Okay, nice looking parts here. Um, yes, I think that was it. 
so that's inside a modern gas analyzer and who knows what we could do with all these parts here i think that one looks nice maybe i should put that in my uh in my suitcase next time when i do air travel i think the security guys will be excited about that well no certainly a bad idea okay thanks for watching Thank you.